This episode is brought to you by My Free Tax Challenge. Here's the thing, taxes suck, they're no fun, but we've all gotta file them. In my free tax challenge, I'm gonna walk you through the five steps you need to take to get your tax documents organized for this tax season. Then you'll be ready to send your stuff off to your accountant, or if you wanna self file, you can follow my step-by-step screen share video tutorials inside the tax challenge itself to file your taxes on your own with ease. Sign up at www.bradendrake.com forward slash tax challenge and invite your friends. It's going to be a party. You're going to love it. Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Unfuck Your Biz podcast. As you likely know, on Tuesdays, what we generally do is I take the time to answer one question from my free Facebook group, Braden's Besties. So we collect all the questions when people join the group, and I pick one to answer each week. But we decided to mix it up. We're going to try something new. Please let me know after you listen to this, if you like it, shoot me a message on DM on Instagram or tag me on your Instagram stories, post in the Facebook group, give me all the feedback. What we're going to do instead is we are going to take the recording from our weekly Facebook lives. So every Friday in the Facebook group, I do a free live Q&A. We collect questions throughout the week. People show up live. I interact with them. I answer the questions. People will post follow-up questions, all that good stuff. So instead of just answering our one question, we're going to do some repurposing here. We're going to retake the recording from that live video and share it here on the podcast. So check it out. Hope you enjoy. Let me know. And here we go. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you um, for your little bit of patience. I hope that you're doing okay. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up in the comments if you can see me okay, if you can hear me okay. Um, also, let me know if this is the first time that you're here or if you have been to these lives before. If you are new, it's pretty simple. What we do is we have this question collection thread that we post every single Monday. So I'm showing you on my iPad here. Question collection thread we post every Monday. And then you can post your questions on there throughout the week. And then I just pull it up on my iPad and I go through the questions one by one. So this week, we only had two questions. Um, Marcia, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. So it's T Marcia Davis. If I'm not saying it correctly, give me a phonetic spelling. Um, so that I can get it right, because I want to make sure I'm getting your name right. Um, you said you've only seen the Playblacks. Well, welcome live. I'm glad you're here so we can tackle your question. So we're going to get to your question second. If you're here live and you haven't already asked a question, feel free to add it um, in the comment box, because we only have two questions. So today should be relatively quick. All right. Okay, perfect, Marcia. Love it. So Christiana said, um, Hi, Brayden. I'm a solopreneur of a small health and wellness business, and I'm planning to get married this year. First of all, congratulations. What is the most tax advantage way for myself and my future spouse to file our taxes, separately or jointly? I'm a bit confused. Thanks in advance for your help. So generally speaking, the best way to file taxes when you are married is to file married filing joint. When you file as a married couple, you usually... You basically, you get preferential tax treatment from the IRS. You get a little bit of a better tax rate. There's some other advantages as well. There are a few t uh, times where you might not want to file jointly. Um, one of them is if one person has a lot of student loans. Um, if you file separately, you can... And it's more complicated than this. I'm giving you a very generalized answer. But your, if you have income-based repayments, they can be best based on your separate income rather than your joint income. Um, also, I know there's some like funky stuff with like medical bills. So if you have a lot of medical stuff, look into that. But for the vast majority of people, it's going to make sense to file jointly. The one um, kind of disclaimer I will give you, though, is that oftentimes married couples... I wouldn't say that there's like a misunderstanding, but there's miscommunication when it comes to taxes. Because what happens is if you're not saving and paying enough quarterly taxes, that can eat into your spouse's refund if you file jointly. If your spouse makes a lot more than you, that can impact the amount that you need to be saving for taxes. So at the end of the day, especially if you share finances, it is a financial benefit to file jointly. But a lot of people see that complication and they think it's all that stuff's bad. It's really not bad. It's just not fully understanding the big picture. So what I would recommend um, is actually to grab a copy of my book, Self-Promotional. I know, I'm going to show it to you here on camera. 
Uh, the link is up in the description of the video, unfuckyourbizbook.com. But in my book, I do a lot of explaining on how tax rates work, how we need to think about our quarterly taxes, and I give a lot of hypotheticals and examples in there with individuals who have spouses who are not entrepreneurs so we can see how those kind of two worlds collide and impact the conversations we should be having with our significant others. Um, I have a husband who has a full-time job who's not an entrepreneur, so I um, feel like I understand a lot of these nuances as a tax professional with that kind of personal situation. All right, Marcia, so we're going to get to your question. Um, Marcia has quite a lot here in the comment. I love it. I'm all about the details. Um, so I'm just letting you all know I'm going to read this, and I think the context will actually help as like an educational experience for all of us. So Marcia... Um, just want to let you know this is being recorded. It's going to go on the podcast. I don't think there's anything like too intimate and personal here. So you said that you do have a copy of my book. Love it. Um, I'm only on page 70 of the book, so I apologize in advance. That's okay. I'll let you know if, uh, if, uh, I'm sure a lot of the stuff you're going to ask will be covered later in the book, but we'll, we'll get you set up here. So you said, here's my personal setup. I formed a C Corp in 2013 that I already filed as um, an S Corp election on years ago in Florida. So you have, you're being taxed as an S Corp. Great. You said, I have a bunch of DBAs for brands that cover different aspects of the fitness industry. Awesome. Um, Marcia, we do get to DBAs in the book. They're at the end of phase one. Let me know if you've gotten there because that'll be really helpful for you. So... Some of your DBAs, you said, um, I do in-person physical and nutritional fitness training in Tampa, Florida. Love it. Online physical and nutritional fitness training all over the U.S. Great. Online social fitness. Um, so social media marketing, brand development, web design and management, corporate filing and virtual office services affiliate. So you have, you're doing in-person stuff. You're doing online stuff in the same nature. And then you're also doing like other online stuff. You would do online spiritual fitness coaching. Um, this one is a free service, not paid, but I still gather data. Um, online mental fitness coaching slash motivation, not a doctor. It's just mindset motivation. Love it. Financial fitness, um, network marketing opportunities, affiliate marketing opportunities, crypto and online trading opportunities and mentorship. Um, I will be licensing out my physical and nutritional fitness coaching programs under its own brand to myself. You also said I have an online academy slash school that will be set up to teach the two programs I just told you I will be licensing out to trainers. That school is its own brand. So it's a lot you have going on, Marcy. You sound like a very, very busy person. My actual question, is my setup what you would recommend? One big giant corporation while all of these intertwined brands set up as DBAs of the corp. So Marcia, there's kind of a catch-22 here. And I talk about this in the book. On one hand, especially when your tax is an S Corp, it can make tax sense to have everything combined because you're going to pay yourself a salary as the owner operator of this corporation. And then all the profit that you're making in the business, you're going to save taxes on. So when we combine all of our income sources, it's going to result in more profit. The more profit, the more we save in tax with an S Corp in particular. So from a tax perspective, that could make sense. Are there some advanced tax strategies that we might not be considering here? Definitely. Um, I don't usually get into advanced tax strategies, though. I leave that up to uh, accountants who are more savvy with those issues. So that's our one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is the liability issue. And for liability purposes, it's usually best to have as much separation as possible. Because in the book, I talk about the concept of the liability, the magic bubble of protection. And when we put each of our businesses in separate bubbles and separate LLCs uh, or corporations, we get more protection uh, and they're shielded from one another. So in some case, like in some aspects, we like having all of this combined. In some aspects, we do not. Uh, what I typically recommend is just to separate by kind of arena. So you do a lot of online fitness stuff. If I were in your position, I would probably put all of my fitness stuff, all of my health-related coaching stuff in one business, and then all the other things in a different business. Um, because then you can separate your finances, it's easier to do the financial modeling, all that kind of stuff. So one way to think about it. You also ask, what accounting software would you recommend for a multi-entity corporation like mine? QuickBooks is usually considered the go-to. Um, for you, Marcia, if you have a lot of different um, income streams, 
if you don't already have a bookkeeper, I would probably hire one uh, with all the stuff you have going on, probably be worth the investment. You said a lot of the startups that I manage um, are similar. They are holding company LLCs or C-Corps that are owned by one single person who want to elect S-Corp status and create a bunch of DBAs underneath to house their different brands that are usually somewhat related to each other. Example one, I have a client who has an LLC with a nutrition brand, a physical fitness brand, and a juice business as DBAs. That's fine. Um, Same thing would apply to those individuals. Like There are benefits and drawbacks. Example two, I have a client who has a C-Corp who wants to be an S-Corp who is an art brand, uh, a fitness brand, and an event planning company as DBAs. Like those are very different. I would probably separate them. So Marcia, you said um, in the comments, when you say different businesses, do you mean different legal entities instead of solely DBAs? Yes, that's correct. Because to me, when I say business, I'm like a corporation is a business. And then usually I think of the DBAs as different income streams within the business. When I talk about different businesses, I'm referring to like LLC here, LLC there, corporation over here. And then those different businesses slash entities will have different revenue streams. That's the way I like to think about it. Um, Marcia, I can usually in my programs, I can help people like DIY up to like a pretty high level. I don't know, like, obviously, we're in a public arena here. I have no idea what revenue you're operating at. I don't know if you, you know, have a a few businesses that are making a couple hundred dollars a month, or if you have a bunch of businesses that are making tens of thousands of dollars per month. If you're on the lighter, the, the, the latter spectrum of that, I would definitely go get a personal attorney to help you sort all of this out. Um, because then you're going to want to look into some advanced strategies for sure. So I hope that helps. Uh, Marcia answer some of your questions. Super happy that you have the book. You're uh, going through that. I want to let everyone else that's here know that, of course, the book is available. The tax challenge is still happening. So if you haven't filed your 2020 tax return, definitely go sign up for my free tax challenge at www.bradendrake.com forward slash tax challenge. And then I also have a new freebie that I just created last week called the Unfuck Your Biz Audit Workbook. It's going to take you through some exercises to figure out what steps you need to take to unfuck your biz. So check that out. All the links are in the description. If you have any questions, uh, post them on our question collection thread on Monday or throughout the week so that I can tackle them during next week's Q&A. It's always fun to hang out with you. Um, I hope you found this most useful. And I wish you all the best weekend. Have a good one. Hey there, before you go, I wanted to give a quick thanks. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. If you loved it, I would love for you to take a screenshot of the episode or snap a quick selfie while you are listening. Share it on social and give me a tag. It'll help other kick-ass entrepreneurs like yourself find the show. That's it for today. I'll be back soon with a new episode. Meanwhile, let's roll up our sleeves and unfuck that biz.